We're talking Ruby Volume 9 spoilers. If you're not caught up, go get caught up and then come back, please. So we touched on this just a little bit before, the idea of taking Jean's storyline, and he's radically different than everyone else in this whole volume. What was the thought process behind that? Just be different. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, we, we'd seen what it was like for, you know, the girls just be like thrust into this. And honestly, it felt just a little boring to then just like, okay, now they found Jean. Mm. How do we show somebody who's in a completely different part of coping with everything that happened in volume eight, who's been by themselves for, you know, 10, 20 years, what is that like and what does that do to somebody? I think, again, it's just another area where we could take something in the Ever After and say, like, how can we do something that we can't do on yeah. Remnant? We can't just age somebody up all of a sudden and have them experience these things, so. Well, and it also felt really good for John specifically that he actually is a character in a fairy tale, mm -hmm. um, right? Because he always wanted to be this hero. And at different points in the series, he's learned that maybe that looks differently than what he mm -hmm. thought. But now it's like he gets thrust into this actual role and it went yeah. so badly for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah seeing what that would do to him and how he's been spending this time in this paper village and yeah. trying to save everybody. Time heals all wounds, but sometimes you need more time. Sometimes you need more time. <laughs> more and more time. But yeah. I remember one of the things that we had talked about early in the writing process was almost this like Groundhog Day scenario of right. Jean getting to play the hero over and over and over because it was something that helped him bury that wound a little bit. And, and yeah, kind of what he had to do with the end of William Made and that responsibility yeah. that fell on him. And it's, Jean's storyline's rough. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I feel bad for him. I feel bad for him. Yeah, it's tragic. Yeah. In the most beautifully tragic way. Yeah. I, like going back to the beginning of the, of the series too, like I think Ruby and John have always been kind of two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. They were the first friendship that really formed at Beacon. So to hear John lamenting, I'm like, I want to be the hero. I've been trying so hard, but it's simply not possible. I'm like, oh, Ruby's dealing with a lot yeah. of the same thing too. Yeah. But you know, we'll see how her journey plays out. Um, yeah. Hopefully John can shave. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Good, good, good luck. Well, well, speaking of Ruby, you know, she hit an emotional boiling point this episode really. And yeah. so what was it like playing that? I mean, that's kind of unique for her. I love taking Ruby into different emotional areas that we haven't touched on before. Ruby has gotten, I think, agitated. She has stood mm -hmm. up for herself in moments, but never like this. This is not standing up for yourself. This is a pure explosion of a lot of oh, emotion yeah. that she's been holding in. And uh, it's directed at anyone and everyone. Doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 for better or worse. But I, I do think that although it's harmful and there are going to be repercussions for that sure. because there have to be, I do think it's important for her to just finally... It's realistic. Right, to break past past a lot of structural yeah. and societal norms that she's been burdened down by and go, I just have to think about me in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, how am I feeling? Now you know, now you're aware of it. You know, we've talked internally about it and, and even the fans have been saying like, yeah, when is Ruby gonna break down when? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is the start. Beep, 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 yeah. it's here. But, she's a critical mass. Yeah. 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 Just massive, massive props to you and the performance there. I remember Thanks. the, like even seeing it in script form, it's always one thing, but I like, we always get really excited about hearing everyone's kind of interpretation yeah. on line deliveries and stuff and the very first time I heard that I remember being like oh my god like this yeah. is so much better than like anything I could have there's a couple of the line deliveries about the like gotta stay positive that, like, yeah. I, I was like yeah. oh my gosh I remember Ruby that taunt, specifically you know? yeah and yeah. I, in the booth I was like is this too mean like Ruby's being yeah. such a jerk right now I love at least it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's important thank you it was a great yeah. job Lindsay no, yeah. no really I'm sorry really great and then the final like you know she's kind of lashed out at everybody but like the very final kind of very quiet shut up like to yeah. someone that you care about it like I've been on the receiving end of that yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. it's like oh that feels so bad when someone yeah, that you care about is like I don't want to hear anything else you have to say yeah. I'm done. right definitely and I've visually I talked about that like the translation from us being in the booth and then watching you guys make that come to life mm -hmm. um, I had an idea of what that scene was gonna be like in my head or her reaction is but like watching her hurt people but from a place of hurt is just yeah. so like oh it's hurt people hurt people honestly yeah, yes <laughs> Thanks for watching this deeper dive into this week's episode of Ruby. If you want more, come back every Tuesday after the episode and we'll talk about it and have fun. And go watch the episodes on Crunchyroll every Saturday. Please go watch it. Bye. Thank you.